This is the worst Mexican national team I've seen in my lifetime. And I had to win this the 2015 squad, finish off the year winning only four of their final 14 games, drawing seven and losing in three. Interestingly enough, you could say that since 2018, the Mexican national team has been on a progressive free fall that has taken a nosedive in the last three to four years. Since 2021, Mexico has failed to win the Nations League three consecutive times. Meanwhile, the United States, our biggest rivals, have seemingly coasted to victory every single time. You could also say that the Nations League is glorified friendlies that were created by FIFA in order to sell more tickets. Honestly, the media has taken the Nations League and ran with it, so there's not really much room for that argument. Regardless about what you might think about the Nations League, one thing is becoming clear is that this side is regressing and this is also shown by the fact that the US is undefeated versus Mexico in their last seven games. With Mexico's last win coming in 2019, it says it's the fact that for the first time since 1978, Mexico failed to get past the World Cup group stage in 2022. It's so so pitiful i genuinely cannot believe everything that i just stated and before anyone questions on my qualifications to speak about la selección one i'm mexican two i've been watching la selección play since i was about eight years old and they were honestly my introduction into football as a whole i was watching them before i started watching the european league so i really know what i'm talking about here okay i've been following them for a really long time so i don't want any slander in my name in the comment there was always a sentiment that the team was good enough to compete with not only the top concacaf teams but also some of the big dogs across the world and is that coming from bias of course it is movement i want to see their national team do well but irregardless of that bias from about 2008 to the 2018 world cup Mexico seemed to be at a recent peak with players like rafa marquez charito giovanni dos santos guardado layun herrera and Ochoa in his prime the national team was full of not only talent that was playing at high levels but also players who were ready to give their all on the pitch for their country with four copa oros from 2009 to 2019 which was the tail end of this era four consecutive world cups and an olympic gold medal victory mexico was capitalizing on the talent that they had at their disposal but somewhere along the way, something went wrong and La Selección has not recovered since. And real quick boys, if you're enjoying the video and enjoying the content, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you're new to the channel. And if you're not new to the channel, welcome back boys. Hope you're enjoying the content that I've been posting so far. With that being said boys, let's get into Mexico and why we have been facing so many problems in the last couple of years. I believe there are two factors that have contributed directly to La Selección's decline, with both factors playing off of each other in one way or another. For the first factor, Liga Mekis and the Mexican Football Federation are not allowing our best talent to go to Europe, which is greatly hindering their development. And I want to really emphasize that this is really only a problem for our players that are showing potential world-class quality, but I'll get into that in just a second. Many players who are in Liga Mekis are essentially facing one of two dilemmas while in Mexico and are looking to make the jump abroad. The first one is that Liga Mekis is paying the top Mexican talent a ridiculous amount of money, which is giving players no incentives to leave. For example, let's take a look at Alexis Vega, a player who definitely has had some potential, but has spent his entire career in Mexico. When he was still at Chivas, he was on a $3.7 million contract. That's more than a lot of Premier League players make. Players like Jacob Ramsey, Mateus Cunha, Pedro Neto, Ivan Tony, Danny Wolbeck, and the list goes on. Can you really sit here with a straight face and tell me that Alexis Vega is better than Pedro Neto? That he deserves to be making more than him? No. Why is he making that much money? There's a clear problem here where Liga MX sides are overpaying some of their top talent, which is giving them no reason to properly challenge themselves. They can make more money by staying in their home country, playing football for a club that is more than likely going to make the playoffs every single season and still get called up to the national team what is the point of challenging yourself by going abroad to unfamiliar territory you can see the problem right secondly teams in mexico are not allowing some of their players to leave at all in this case let's take a look at el chiquito sanchez el chiquito has arguably been one of if not the best center midfielder in liga mekis in the last few seasons and his services have earned them call-ups to the national team at just 24 years old he still has plenty of time to continue to grow his skill set and develop into an even better midfielder than he already is. However, his club is holding him back. Pachuca recently had the opportunity to allow Chiquito to depart to Toulouse in France, but instead blocked the offer and essentially forced him to stay in Mexico. And look, again, I want to emphasize, I'm not saying it's a problem to start your career in Liga MX. For all Mexican players, it's going to be the place where they can refine their talents and continue to grow. I'm not trying to say that our talent should be in Europe at the age of 18 or 16, especially because many of our players aren't ready for the jump at that point. However, once players reach a point where Liga MX isn't providing a real challenge and they aren't showing any growth as players and then that is a time where we as a country must realize that keeping our best players in Mexico isn't doing us any good. We actually got some more news since I originally recorded this video. It looks like Alexis Vega was wanted by Benfica and by Porto which is right those Portuguese league teams that I was talking about earlier but he was essentially priced out of the move which kind of goes hand in hand with both of the examples that I was giving. The fact that he was being paid so much by the teams in Mexico really just priced 
them out. So he was essentially forced by his club to stay in Mexico instead of going to a league that would have been way better for him as a player. This plays into my second factor. We all know Liga Mekis is the best league in CONCACAF. I know MLS is starting to sign players like Messi, Giroud, Suarez, and all the guys that are at Inter Miami, and even in rare instances signing young talents like Ricky Bug at LA Galaxy, but objectively, Liga Mekis is just better. When the matchups are fair, as we see in the CONCACAF Champions League, Mexican teams blow the US teams out the water. However, Liga Mekis is nowhere near the level it has been at before, nor anywhere near the level of some of Europe's more developmental leagues like the Eredivisie or Liga Portugal. It's in these leagues where we should be sending our more promising players in order for them to continue to grow. But let's take a look at players like Etan Alvarez and Santi Jimenez, for example. These are two players who took the leap from Liga MX to Europe and have become 10 times the player that they ever were. After impressing the Ajax, Etan moved to West Ham where he has not only improved as a player, but has also impressed many as he was brought to try and fill the gap that Declan Rice left behind and has done a great job since. For Jimenez, he has quickly become one of the most promising strikers in Europe and there's no telling what he may accomplish after moving on from Feyenoord. Now we have players like Sanchez who could be developing into even brighter players but is stuck in his current surroundings. And once again I want to emphasize this because I know people are going to be on my back about it. Having players in our national team that are playing in Liga Mekis or in MLS has not always been a bad thing. In the 2010 and 2014 World Cup squads we had 14 players coming from Liga Mekis and MLS and 11 in the 2018 World Cup squad. And the reason why I'm talking about the World Cup squad specifically because this is where every nation is sending their best and their brightest to compete against everyone else in the world so this is the best factor of here's our best 23 26 players hence why i'm using them as an example in some of our past world cup squads we've had players like fotemo blanco gerardo torado el bofo bautista and they all have performed for mexico and have spent a majority of their time playing in liga mekis the real issue is that the general quality of the league has dropped as we ditched relegation promotion and have expanded the amount of teams that make it into la liga which is the playoffs from 8 to 12 then back to 10 and now back to 12 12. Liga Mekis at the moment is allowing every team, every player to be okay with being bang average. Teams and players know that they do not have to give it their all because at the end of the day, they know that their team just has to be 12th best team in the country in order to still have a chance to win it all. With two thirds of the league given the chance to win the league in one way or another and the other one third not facing any consequences due to their poor performances, it is essentially just a constant cycle of promoting being bang average. Pair this with the fact that players are earning high wages and then you see how this is a problem. When every year you are guaranteed to earn millions, you have no pressure to perform at a high level consistently because you know you just have to make it to 12th place and there's no need to leave such a comfortable environment. And let me try and reel it in real quick because I kind of feel like I'm going on a little bit of a yap fest here. What I'm trying to get at is the fact that Liga Mekis is only producing a small handful of actual promising talent. That talent is then stuck playing in Mexico either due to the fact that their clubs are not letting them leave or they have no desire to leave because they Know they're gonna earn less and work harder elsewhere. Once stuck in Mexico, players then continue to play and develop in poor leagues where they become very one dimensional and easy to play against at a high level. So, once we do play larger opponents or the US, who currently have stars all across Europe, and I know some of you are gonna say, Oh, but some of the US players play on the bench, who cares? They're still playing, they're still getting game time. So, regardless of what you might think, regardless of the fact that some of the players sometimes are on the bench, you're still getting better experience than the players that are playing in Liga Mekis. So, essentially, once we do play these sides, right, either bigger Europe. European sides or South American sides or the US, Mexico is exposed as being really mediocre. But despite all this negativity that I am spewing out, it's not all doom and gloom. There are potential fixes that could rescue the situation for Mexico. First of all, we do need to find a coach that is going to play our best talent. And I'm tired of seeing Antuna and Henry Martin starting for Mexico as they encapsulate some of the problems that I have described and have quite frankly just not been anywhere near good enough. You have players like Santi Jimenez just sitting on the bench and now you've had multiple multiple managers who just aren't giving one of the most promising players in Europe a chance to play at the striker position for us. He's sitting on the bench because Henry Martin is proved in Liga Mekis and every time he played for the national team he does nothing. And then in Antuna's case he's been in the squad now for quite some time and does anyone have a very memorable moment for Antuna? No because he doesn't do anything. Literally play anyone else. Give someone else a chance. Anyone. Also this might give me uh, some heat here but I'm done with Ochoa. Whoever the next coach is that comes in he needs to make a statement and just be done with Ochoa. He is 
undoubtedly a legend. He's been in the Mexico national team for quite some time now. He's had amazing World Cup, but he is past it. He is old. He is not good. He is too old to be playing at a high level. We need to start giving our other goalkeepers a chance. How do you expect other keepers to sell into the side, communicate, and build relationships with our defenders if you're just playing on Choa constantly every single tournament, every single time? Thank you, Choa, for the memories, but it's time to go. I know I went a little bit of a tangent there, but secondly, we have to allow our players to leave to Europe. The experiment isn't always going to work as we saw with Diego Lainez and a couple of other players who have gone to Europe, but if we don't send our brightest players, we're never going to know how much better they can be. Let our players go play in leagues where they're going to be challenged physically and tactically by other top talent across the world. To be the best, you got to play against the best. It's that simple. Lastly, and this one's probably going to take the longest, bring back relegation promotion and tighten the amount of teams that make La Liga from 12 back to 8. This will force teams to be more competitive, helping the league pick up some of the quality it used to have as players will want to make sure they're playing at the best of their ability in order to compete for titles. Relegation promotion being kind of thrown to the wind isn't exclusive to Liga MX. I know MLS doesn't do it and they never have, I don't think. And that's just something I don't agree with. Like I said, you're going to be promoting mediocre teams if you're just allowing two thirds of your league to make it into the playoffs and have a chance to win the title. There's no set in stone solution for La Selección. I'm sure there's a ton of problems behind the scenes as well that we probably just don't really know about that are affecting a lot of things. For example, a lot of people's grievances with the national team is that they're playing so many games in the United States instead of playing in Mexico where, you know, they're supposed to play. It's the Mexican national team. Play in your home country, garner the support your fans, build a fortress, create an environment where you're able to win more games, become more competitive. Because playing all these friendlies here, it's not doing you any better. I know you're making more money, but you have to play in Mexico. But I'm just some guy that makes YouTube videos. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. I just wanted to see the best for La Selección. I don't think we're going to have a good World Cup 2026, but you know, hoping for the best. Hopefully we can finally get past the round of 16. We have two years to get it together. I don't know if it's going to happen, but who knows? Time will tell. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe Mexico is going to end up winning the whole thing.